and spritz her this and you know <laughs> health drink that. No, I mean I do, I don't I miss being a raven alcoholic. Actually, this stomach isn't me being pregnant, Garvin. Just leave me alone. Uh, maybe we should put our foot on the brake here yeah. a little bit, folks. In the room, fifty-two jokers wild. Welcome to the show, everybody. It's another Friday to In the Room. And in the room this week, we have Jonathan Brownlee, who is a, an award-winning writer, director, producer. And we probably won't get a chance to talk about any of those things because we're going to be looking at more interesting things about the fact that he comes from <laughs> Canada, which is absolutely brilliant. You know, I should have put my Canadian flag out the back there. I have one, so I may actually throw you it up. Probably as a, as will a with the green screen. Yeah, yeah we'll okay. put the green screen in because I think that's brilliant. Right. We're actually yeah. off to Canada if it opens up in September to go and see, our, to meet my granddaughter for the first time, who's living out there, and uh, who, who's about uh, eight or nine months old, I think, and my grandson, which we haven't seen for two years. And I think I get to see my son as well at some point. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. You were talking a short time point. ago about the fact that uh, your accent sometimes comes from a certain part of Canada, uh, which kind of connects us all here. Well, apart from me, because I'm English and that's boring. <laughs> No, it's true. It, it, we were just saying, uh, saying you know, you're having a pint next to the guy on you. And when I go out to the Maritimes in Canada, I mean, my 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 stepfather's family is from Prince Edward Island, which is near Newfoundland and Labrador. And and I get out there, and it's like, right, boy, how's it going? Fill your boots and stuff, right? And then I'm like, what am I? T- what happened here? Oh, it's a couple of beers in, but you know, it's a big Irish influence in that in that part of the world in the Maritimes and. Uh, just wonderful people, you know, it's, it's like one of the largest potato fields on the planet, you know, it's potato fields and PEI mussels, which are, of course, you know, exported around now, the uh, lobster. And oh, all Jonathan, that. Jonathan, how could you bring us back to the famine? All I can hear is potatoes, <laughs> potatoes and whiskey. Actually, I think the whiskey came from the potatoes. I'm not it even sure. I mean, we're, we're, what Ireland is all about now is we're the craft whiskey and the potatoes Actually, the potatoes never went away. It might be chips or fries or God knows what. But That's the thing right. is, there's a very weird perception of Ireland that we're the land of the potatoes and the whiskey and the quiet man and John Wayne and and what and bit of Michael Flatley doing a little bit of a jig and a dance. But actually, we're top of the world. We're the film capital. We're the we're the biotech. <laughs> we're the Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're, you know, that, well, we, but at the same time, there's no escape in the Irish potato and the whiskey. And, I, and we like that because what pot-gene. that is, Don't is forget the eating pot-gene. and drinking right. with friends. That's right. And, we, and we've got, everyone's like, oh, you're from Canada. So it's poutine, right? Everyone's like, instantly poutine, poutine yeah. you know, French fries with church, you know, cheese curds and gravy. And that's what you eat when you come off the ice, you know? So it's all of those things. But yeah, you're, I mean, Ireland has made incredible strides in the film industry uh, in the last 20 years, you know, not not the least of which is the tax incentives, which are great. I've never, well, it's not true. I have shot in Ireland many, many years ago when I had a golf show and I got played to play, you know, to lose playing golf and all the best golf courses in the planet. So that was, that was pretty fabulous. So I got a chance to, you know, play in you know, England, Ireland, and Wales and Scotland and India. And we'll these- get you back. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll yes. be back. We'll be back and hit some hickory <laughs> sticks and featheries here pretty soon. Right. But actually, that's the weird thing that you literally hit the nail on the head and go, Ireland is now again, without talking about the industry, because we didn't want to talk about the war yeah. or anything else like that. Yeah. But it, it, what Ireland is, is it's probably one of the best tax incentives out there for film production. And what the Irish industry wants to do is it has like it's creating talent and it wants to attract talent and it wants to attract the stories to Ireland. And the, what better way than the help of the Irish government to go? You can get the talent here and you can get it at a good tax break. And we have lots of good looking places. And, and that's what's here. And that's why actually we got into the industry here in the first place, because we see there's a massive opportunity in it. But we also feel a big, massive pain in it. Because two years ago, when we sort of entered where we're going, we yeah. noticed the exit of the investor from indie production because things are getting harder all the time. And sto- so stories are getting finally harder, get harder to get financed, to get made because the big players are coming in the top, taking up the capacity, using all the production facilities and the talent to make the big streaming things. But the yeah. middleman, middle market of indie is what's, getting, what's, what's most attacked and damaged because it doesn't know how to play the game anymore because it needs to be, it needs an awful lot of people to get together to, to get, attract that finance, to make that story, to create that yeah. opportunity. Now, yeah. we, that's where we're going to go play. But at the yeah. same time, 
that's where opportunity is hidden, we feel, because there's lots of stories that need making. And it, it's just the, the story of the story is where, is where we're going to play because we, well, that, you have to help others pay it forward and, 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 and help them get that story out there. And that's what, that's, yeah, well, that's, 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 that's what Tractor does. Of, you know, those, the, that's, I call that kind of no man's land, right? Because you've got the really big players who are, you know, in the $100 million range and they're coming in and they're like, not just running one soundstage for three months anymore, they're running the entire facility for 10 years. So it also gets their stuff done, but it also pushes everyone else out of the market. You know, but then you've got these, you know, middle budgets, you know, 5 million to 25 million. You know, it's a very difficult space to play in. Stuff under 3 million, under a million, the really small, small or micro indies is still getting made around the planet. And that's kind of how people are being creative to get their stories told. But the stuff in the middle market is, is really difficult. You know, it's tough. That's well, I think what's really good from our perspective is I, I made a couple of uh, low budget films just out of the sheer hell of doing it, you know. Uh, I've also taught people filmmaking and my background is in editing. And we, we, we just realized that there was an opportunity to mix education with filmmaking. So you end up with a product because most students go to college and they make, they don't really know how to write scripts. They don't really know how to shoot their stuff. And, and then they kind of think, well, I've got my first class honors degree and now I can go off and work and they can't get any work. So what we're looking at is a master's degree, which we've designed from job specifications yeah. to to basically get people working on a feature film rotating rounds and then at the end of it we've created a feature film the way we assess the students is through the documentary you make because that becomes an asset that you can actually sort of look at assessment continuous assessment and then we've got a documentary and a feature film that we can sell at a later date all paid for before it's left the door <laughs> which is which is the model that we're thinking of anyway which i think is is, that's, is that's that's actually here's a strange thing john that we says we we're not going to say we're not going to say i came on this show <laughs> don't talk about work george and myself went off and did a pitch by accident i think we're just geared up because of the last few conversations we're yeah, having last now we're going to park that and go we don't care about that anymore now about the aliens we want, <laughs> we're back <laughs> To, yeah, we're back to aliens, or we're back to craft whiskey and Conor McGregor and the, and the fastest <laughs> lunch of whiskey on the planet. And, and, and you go, what? Well, that's the madness of it all. You go, that's what we like. You're going, here's an Irishman that just comes in, sticks his name to a bottle of whiskey. 200 million later, we're going, <laughs> hasn't even, doesn't even drink the stuff himself. You're going, but there's lots of games to be had. And there are no, there's not as much rules anymore. You can right. conquer the planet with your phone type of thing. Well, I mean, you look at guys like George Clooney and, and that group that had Casamigos, right? You know, like start a little tequila company and guess what? They sold it for a billion dollars, right? You got oh. Ryan Reynolds, you know, who Aviation Gin is like one of the top brands on the planet. Certainly, you know, I live here in, in Dallas, Texas. I'm the, I call myself a Canadian cowboy in Texas, right? So it's like, <laughs> we're here and it's, you know, it's like, Everything is bigger in Texas, including the egos. So it works out really well for you know people trying to be in the entertainment business because they don't really have a, a sense of they really think they want to be in LA or they want to be in New York, but they're here. So it's this it's this very I actually call them positively Canadian, you know, yeah. the Texans because I actually really like Texans. They're generally very kind, you know, they look you in the eye, you shake your hand and you do something, right? As opposed to other places where you know they look you in the eye and then they're figuring out how to stab you in the back. It's not really what happens. Oh, here. I like that. I like yeah. it. It's actually, you said a couple of words there, and you said like, to say, the clash of the titans and the clash of the egos. You know, and, and that's what I, well, well, I like that type of language. You got a film thrown in there, clash of the titans, but the same, and there's lots of muscly men running around and gods and demigods oh, and no. scantily clad <laughs> women and God knows what. <laughs> but the clash of the egos are in the same room to get that thing made and done and financed. And you're going, and then the stars, you're going, it, it's a strange thing is the clash of the egos. Yeah, we always keep on saying we want to be in the room that we're the only one. So, yes, I'd love to be the only Canadian in the room of everybody else. We want to be the only Irish person in the room of all the Americans. You want to be the odd one out. Therefore, it makes you special in the room because everyone else is a me too and the same. Well, here's the and you're thing, not competing Garvin. with them. It's a, it's a very strange thing. Sort of, uh, Jonathan is a Canadian in, in America. I'm an, I'm an Englishman in, in Ireland. Now, where, why haven't you gone anywhere, Gavin? Yeah, what say, the hell? Come on. Nobody else would take him. That's Catch what up. it was. He went down to leave. No, I have decided <laughs> never to leave. I am Muhammad. I am going to bring the mountain to Muhammad. I don't okay. need to leave the room. I'm going to bring the mountain to the room. Yeah, that's it. He's actually the elephant. Reach out on the planet. <laughs> 
Oh, and the elephant in the room. That's there's, you, there's this amazing hockey announcer in Canada, a guy named Don Cherry. I don't know if you've ever seen Don Cherry, but I'm looking at your suit and shirt, and you, you should look up Don Cherry, all right? This guy, <laughs> you know, they, they, I don't think they let him out of the hockey rink because nobody else can put up with him, right? And I kind of get the feeling that's sort of where you're yeah, at. No, George right? doesn't let me out of the room. I don't, well, he doesn't, well, he end, he's going to end this show later. I think I'm talking <laughs> and saying stuff, but when I watch the show afterwards, there's all this head movement. I'm gone. Words are put in <laughs> afterwards. There's subtitles to explain what it is I thought I was saying. You know, right. so I mean, there is a lot which of, we have to make. He's a up. doctor. He's a doctor <laughs> of what I do. You know, he, he actually he's actually the strange thing is George is a very very uh, rational, logical person. I'm irrational, illogical. <laughs> and therefore, I've also probably got ADHD on steroids. I have no... I've been to, coaching him for the I, last two and a half years. Two I'm years, and this is the best he got. Some kind of breakthrough, but it's nearly wrecking me. <laughs> yeah. Now, you may but notice anyway, that Garvin is sort of, you know, Jonathan and myself are sort of fairly well sitting in the, in the composition. Garvin, every time he starts up here and he starts to sink down, and by the end of the show, he's gone. It's, and yet he's he's six foot six. He's taller than most of us. He's a giant, geez. you know, in Ireland. <laughs> Everybody else is... Well, well, right, well, right. a very We're cheap all, chair. We are all equal in 16 by nine. That's the that's whole thing. It. That's right? it. So, <laughs> so we need to get Garvin to just sit up a bit more. <laughs> and dance back to the pub. Yeah. We're going. Yeah, We're I'm, I'm, equal. Barely, I'm barely four foot three, but I look like I'm six foot six in this frame. Right? So, that's like, it. That's it. <laughs> but I'm nine foot seven with the ego i mean that i bring that <laughs> ego into any room i don't need anybody else it's me myself and i we're at the bar there's three drinks on the counter people think they're for them it's not it's not that's just me you gotta you, you're, you the get your own you're the trifecta you're the trifecta right the perfect trifecto that's you have it. to actually genuflect to you when we walk in the bar because you are the triumvirate got it you don't that's want to it. bring me back to my ultra boy days. That's some nightmares. <laughs> thing. Actually, I, I, I'm going to go back to my, night, my ultra boy days for a second because every Irish mother puts their kid to be an ultra boy. Now, she, my mother thought I wanted to be an ultra boy because I was actually helping to collect all the little mon the money that was being donated. But she, what I didn't, what she didn't really realize was I liked counting money. And I liked it as, as close as I got was collecting these baskets full of it. She thought I wanted to be an ultra boy. So she signed me up. All of a sudden, I'm in a little red uniform and I've got a big cross. And because I was about six foot three or 13 years of age, they had to put me in the front or the whole line in possession and be upset. But I forgot to bend the cross. So I smashed a stained glass window that's been there about 200 years. I knocked the head of Jesus off the cross. And <laughs> I think my altar boy days were very short lived. Yeah, but I mean, communication was next. Is that what you're saying? You're out. <laughs> oh, the priests. They didn't want me back there because I was trying to pocket the change as well. It was like one for right. me, one for God, and one yeah, for But me. you could light the candles because you were tall or change the light bulb. That's they it. had to keep you around for some reason. You know what? I was in that procession. I had that candle, and the person's hair in front of me was on fire. It's, I was dangerous. I am the awkward. As a kid, it was six foot six or six foot three with two awkwardly in a height at the wrong age and no control of the bodily parts. So I was gangly and awkward and that was my problem. I was an alien in plain sight to everybody else. They didn't want anything to do with that thing. See, they I knew what that was. We're back to aliens. We're back to yeah, aliens. We're back to aliens. Yeah. Right. yeah. So right. well, the, the interesting thing going. is that uh, Garvin, when we started these shows, because I'm actually trained to be a deacon, but I haven't mentioned anything about religion. Okay. And when we came on these shows and started them 85 episodes ago, he said, George, you're not allowed to talk about, you're not allowed to talk about Christianity. You're not allowed to talk about God. You're not. And he keeps having his Jesus moments and he keeps going off and wrecking havoc in, in the church. Well, mine aren't religious, George. So, yeah. <laughs> We've, we've heard that he's the Trinity. We heard that he has a beer for each one of them. You know, he's yes. an altar boy. He's <laughs> burned half the churches in Ireland down. And But you, the deacon, isn't allowed to talk about it. I'm not, I'm not allowed not to really talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> now, George has said what he wants. He's quite close. To, well, I don't know. If he, he, said, he pretends to know the bishop. I don't know what that yes. is. He might know the bishop. I'm going to go and see said, him sometime now, what soon. What we wanted to do was we want to get the bishop on the show. But the bishop can only talk about Spock. Yo, we again. want him to be out of his Vulcan <laughs> mind. We want him to, right. we can't have him talk about religion, but we don't mind having the bishop talk about maybe the ethics around Star Trek. That would be a bit more okay. interesting. Well, here's looking up your cassock. Yes, yes. Well, well, <laughs> there's nothing up there worth looking at, trust us. <laughs> but that's the great thing, because I think uh, I love sci-fi, and I'm not going to 
escape from sci-fi because I love the fact that you can talk about anything in sci-fi because they explore all kinds of ideas and that becomes you know you can sneak in little bits and pieces because of the sci-fi and the things they they kind of explore so are you into sci-fi or do you ha- I know I have a friend of mine that says don't talk about sci-fi George I hate it and so we just keep talking about sci-fi to upset him <laughs> no I, I especially as a kid in high school uh you know Arthur C. Clarke and all you know all the great sci-fi writers and of course I was a big fan of you, know, you mentioned Star Trek Yes. Um, and actually I made a film with Marriott Hartley a couple of years ago and she was on Star Trek. She was the only person besides, you know, you know, Captain Kirk I'd ever worked with. So it, it was, it was interesting talking to her about being on that set and being a part of that, you know, iconic show, which actually there's not a lot of ep- people think it's like, Oh, it was on for, you know, 25 years. I'm like, there's not that many episodes, right? So it's, three episodes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really incredible when you think about the impact that something like that has had on our on our culture and and we always reference it even yeah. though you know in the great scheme of things you know it really wasn't you know this long running television series it's, it's really fascinating well, well, well we, we always mentioned that it, what it is, is is there's a good element of science the journey of science fiction to science fact and the self-fulfilling prophecy of everything from the mobile phone to nanotechnology and and that sort of stuff now the one thing i really really miss are i'm missing or or and or waiting for is to beam me up and beam me down we also touched on the fact we sort of have that but it's not beaming the matter it's beaming you know the ones and zeros you know i mean and that's what we're beaming up and down currently you now elon and and Jeff there, you know, when, when, when the two, one couple of the richest people on the planet are Who leaving are the our, planet. By the way, they're all in our backyard here in Texas, right? So that's, well, that's they're on the, the way in a ship somewhere, yeah. I thought. They're leaving the planet. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you want to be tumming a lift wherever they're going because mm-hmm. there's something else on the way <laughs> that we need I, to be I avoiding. Still, I still think the beaming up and beaming down is happening because every time I open my front door, there are Amazon packages out there. And I'm not sure I ordered any of these things. They just yes. show up every single day on my porch. And I'm like, so the, the, he must have figured it out because how the hell does he get stuff to a billion people on the planet overnight? Or, hey, now we've got it in the afternoon. You order something and before you finish clicking, there's a knock at your door. So he's got to be beaming shit up and down, right? It's got to be happening. It's, it's about no, time No, actually, travel, what he's time done travel. is kidnapped <laughs> Santa's elves. That's you go, it. Santa's elves now work for Amazon. You know, they're working 25, sorry, day, 25 hours a day, eight days a week. Three, you know, that's, that's what's going on there. It's, time is now relative. And it's, it's Amazonian time. Amazonian you know, I mean, time. I mean, I, they've definitely packaged time there somehow. You know, but, but, it's, but it's, it's, it's when you get the thing on. It's when you get the thing on on the door that tells you that your daughter's actually pregnant, and you, nobody actually knew about it, and neither did she. <laughs> Okay, that took an entirely new turn. George has you- gone. Oh, First of all, my I was watching stuff about Amazon on DW. Here. <laughs> they, they put, they, and you know what they're doing here with babies now is they're not like they're having these gender reveal parties. Do you guys have those in Ireland? This is ridiculous. So they're like gender they're coming reveal. up with all these crazy ways to tell you know their husband that it's a girl or it's a boy. You know, or it's yours, more to the better yeah. one. Yeah. Or, 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 it's, or it's the deacons, right? Yeah. So, yeah. you know. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's no, it's actually, not. the other thing is now, it's too, actually, that's a sensitive subject. I mean, everyone's given out about gender per se. Now, how do you do a gender? Of, could be a table. Could be any one of the letters in the alphabet. You're going, <laughs> you can't be saying that or doing that anymore. Everything is too, I'm, I'm frightened to open my, George is frightened, actually, George is frightened if I open my mouth because oh, I'm not, I don't know, I don't know how to be PC. I don't yeah. know what PC is. I think you just have to check and, you know, you just have to check all of the above and then you're covered, right? So yeah, whatever. Absolutely, you know. absolutely. Well, my wife used to be, well, no, she's going back to being a midwife. She, she's been a midwife for the last 30 odd years. So the gender reveal is usually quite quick at that particular point in time really? so, yeah and you kind of go so what do we do okay has, hang on a second let's do some psychoanalysis of the baby to see which gender he wants to be oh sorry she no maybe it wants sure, to be it it's them. an alien <laughs> it's the immaculate conception that's actually it. that's back to aliens you're going this- <laughs> now the alien thing well did you get caught up in the in the in the big sort of build up to the reveal, the reveal of, of, of the uh, are there really aliens out there or or is it just the fact that they want a bigger budget on their military spend <laughs> yeah no I, I, it's always about money right so it's like clearly they felt left out in the whole social media and, and pr things like we're not getting any press anymore we used to like yeah. it used to be all you know 
Area 51 and aliens and Ryan Roswell and all this stuff. But they're like, well, clearly no one is, is doing a good job with our press. So guess what? We're going to come out with some Absolutely. story. <laughs> and we're like, this is going to be wah, wah, like boring. <laughs> You know, like really, yeah. There's stuff lying around that we don't know about. Big shocker. Okay. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, and they've got actually, no X Files anymore. <laughs> we right, yeah, exactly. in one of our shows recently. We we probably I think we it's only a few shows back. We discussed we, we discussed the fact if the big reveal is they're already here. What the whole point is if it's there, they're here. They're already here and always have been. So if they're here. You know, to get the, for them themselves, the alien to get any sort of recognition on TikTok, even they gotta be putting on a serious song and dance and makeup session because the amount of stuff that's out there, even if they're staring you in the face at the bar, you'd be telling them to pass the yikes and they couldn't even get your attention because yeah. it's that difficult. Well, you know, and Zuckerberg so, and those guys have already, you know, no aliens on Facebook, right? So they've been yeah. canned already. So you can't even get on Facebook if you're an alien. I know. I know. Right? You don't have the driver's license. Now, we actually it's decided difficult. what the aliens were probably trying to do themselves. If they're actually the ones orchestrating this is they want to get onto first dates and blind dates yeah. and all these type of shows because every other looking like weird looking aliens out there trying to get a date, they want to get a date. You know, because you'll have the ones that aren't using, like, you know, what's that one you swipe left or right, or I don't know, with Tinders and God knows what. Yeah, That's I what like that he's pretending do. he doesn't know what it is. Yeah, sure. Yeah. What is that? Oh, the, those on, I don't know what You those swipe are. up, <laughs> you swipe <laughs> down, swipe, swipe, swipe. and oh, Amazon yeah, okay. delivers one to the door. That's yeah. what we're told, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the swipe thingy, Bobby, that gets delivered. I, was, I wasn't looking for Amazon. I was looking for an Amazonian warrior. I mean, that, that's what was meant to turn up, was actually Wonder Woman. <laughs> you know, but... Well, we we quite, is not showing up. We we had a um, we were, I, I went outside the other day and I heard this buzzing noise and I was kind of go what the hell's that? It's not, the, 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 this must be some really big bees around here or something, you know. And I turned around and there was a drone just above me, <laughs> looking down. And we're kind of going, oh, for goodness' sake, who's got a drone? And it was flying around and doing all sorts of things. I think it was one of the neighbours. But I tell you, we used to have helicopters flying all over the place in Northern Ireland, and that used to sort of it was a crazy thing but to suddenly see a drone flying around and doing stuff you kind of felt more uneasy because you know these things have cameras and they could be watching you although there was one october period where we'd gone down from belfast to here and we saw all these big orange things flying around and, and we were kind of going oh they must be the chinese lanterns i got home here and there was one outside and it just sat there and i went "Ooh, that's a kind of freaky thing and then it did what they did on these shows. It just flew off over the mountain. And I went, that was not a Chinese lantern. That was something else. And I wonder what that was. That was, to me, like an alien watching us. But the drone was a bit more freaky because you knew it's a human actually watching you. You, you knew they were collecting data somewhere. And I think the big data thing is, is the big problem that we're all finding now is that how much do they well, actually, really I'm know ask him, I, While you're talking about that, George, what's popped into my mind is... Yo, John, are you a doomsday prepper? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm in Texas. You have to have a run bag. You know what a run bag is? That's some, yeah, now oh, we yeah, have okay. it. You know, so know, what's in I, the handbag? What's in the bag, the man bag? Right. You know, like how many guns can you carry and how many water purifiers can you have and you know how many $20 bills can you have and maybe I should be carrying diamonds instead because currency well, that's won't be money anymore. be no use. I mean, they can't eat that. No you're going, it's the banks are gone. The electricity is switched off. You're going, there's the walking like the, dead or at the bottom of the road. The you're problem going, is I can't get the keg of beer in the backpack. That's really the problem, right? Oh, so you have the right idea. Screw it's, the water. It's like, if I can't have a beer, we're, you know, might as well grab go down. Grab the whiskey, the, yeah. grab the potatoes. That's Grab it. the gun. <laughs> That's all you really but need. That, the, the question we always ask ourselves is, where are we going? You, know, you, you, look, at, you look at Mission, not Mission, what was it? Um, War of the Worlds and the uh, World. Tom yeah. Cruise, the la or one of the last ones. And you're going, they're all heading off somewhere. You're going, where are they going? You know, what's the plan? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Ireland. That's where I'm going to go because they're they're not going to bother you guys, right? They're going to be like, yeah, screw Ireland. Yeah, we'll go to, what's the United States yeah. up first, right? I think that's what's going to happen. That's well, it. this no, is it because we, we we suddenly start to appreciate that the landscape here is actually lovely. I've got I've got a mountain out here. It's it's about it's about oh uh, a sixteenth of the size of the mountains that you have in Canada, <laughs> where the rock is. Hill, George. We, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's a, just it's just just about got that. There's a, I think there's a little, that actually might be a mound. Is a mound. Uh, okay, we don't. It's not a molehill because we don't have moles here. It's not a molehill. <laughs> not a molehill. 
but it looks pretty <laughs> when we're living on the side of it. Yeah. And it's, it's just there. But I know that, I mean, I did go, we did go to Edmonton we, and we drove from there to Jasper and the likes of. Oh, it's amazing. It's a, it, it is a long, long journey. We were listening to some podcasts on the way and then we got to the mountains. The mountains are really good. We went, but I still love what we've got here. I still love the, <laughs> the, little, the little hill type thing that we've got here that goes green and sometimes gets on fire like Canada does at the moment. And uh, we still have those. We've had the circle of fire around, around our mountain. I live in a place called uh, Sleeve Gullion. Literally do live in it. It's actually a, a volcano where the top dropped down and there's a big ring around it. Okay. And the, and the peak's just inside. And we just live inside there. We have the ring of Gullion. But we do have, you know, we're, we're wondering whether it's going to explode at some point. And it's a bit like... Uh, well, then, yellow, you, then you won't need a run bag. No, we won't point. need a run bag. So, so we're, <laughs> and I don't think yeah. we need run bags here anyway. So, because no, there's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. <laughs> Is that a film as well? I don't know. Is that a song? There's no way there's no to hide. hide. That's the problem. <laughs> no, no, no hide. Actually, what, well, actually, I'm from a... Well, I live in a village, another village, you know, 10 miles over from here, and it's called Gregna Manor. And what it is, is Gregna Manor actually means Valley of the Monks and, and in Irish. And Valley of... You no, know, I keep on saying, because I wasn't from there. My wife was from there. I was from the big city to Dublin, you know, you know, I came down to where <laughs> I was told to be based on if you're going to have children and get married. You go where the wife's mother is from that's you go back to the homestead so i had to come from the big city down to the country but that's the, of the that's so you can get your laundry done is that why is that it's why you... exactly well, no yes. I, well I, the, the thing is i had a couple of siblings you're going you didn't have the plug-in um child minders the, the, the whole instamatic actually it's like the waltons you know she 12 brothers and sisters massive irish families down the country yep. i was the, the the nuclear family of one and a half you know cars and two sisters and no one talked to each other you certainly weren't going to be minding the other people you know, one's children you're going you were at a distance so this was the family the waltons you just i plugged into the waltons i plugged into the valley i plugged into the country and the country girl and the farmstead and 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 that type of thing it was brilliant i loved it but valley of the monks was valley of the drunks it was two thousand people and 16 pubs so i mean it was now, every time I went to these pubs at night, they were all full. You're going, I don't know where the people are coming from because there are. So I didn't realize I was one drink behind everybody. So what was happening was everyone moved pubs. And then you got to the next one, it was a full pub, but the one you left was empty. So it was everyone shared the love, shared the wealth, gave everyone the business. But, and, and I said, at that rate, 16 pubs, you're 10 points in at the minimum a night. But I mean, they know how to party, as you say. They know how to drink. They know how to have the session. So I know where we got the, the imagery abroad as you go out in Ireland, you don't know, it's, it's there's some other comedian in England that's out, out. You don't know when you're going to get back in. You're going, it's you're out till you're, you, you drop or you run out of money or you, or you, or you just, you just as you, you have the bag of chips and you hopefully make it home with a taxi. <laughs> but I mean, if you're in a village where you're already home, they lock you in. They, they call it the lock-in. You don't even get to leave the pub. Is that there in Canada as well? Uh, no, I wish it was, actually. Uh, that sounds positively <laughs> wonderful, quite frankly. Oh, gee darn, I got locked in. Well, I'm going to just keep pouring myself pints all night long, right? That's like, and that's <laughs> they lock you breakfast. in and they lock the guards out. That meant you're now not, no, 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 you're no longer a customer and now you're a guest. That's so it, that, the law, I got around the licensing laws. <laughs> Oh, got it, got it. No, well, as soon, no, as, need, soon as the guard was off duty, they opened him up and let him in so he could carry on drinking with them as well. That was always the way up here. Clearly. <laughs> now we're all doing belly gowns and water, though. That's, we're getting healthy and, and, and spritzer this and, you know, it. health drink that. No, I mean, I, do, I don't, I miss being a raving alcoholic. Sometimes, you know. Was, how, how, could you, how could you miss that? That's, that's something you never give up, I think, you know. Some people say, oh, I'm not drinking. It's in. Yeah, whatever. It's in the yeah. DNA. It is in the DNA. Yeah, that's it the is. problem I've got it's because being English, I'm the designated driver. I have to drive everybody around. I've, I've always got a car full of drunks sort of carrying on drinking as I'm, you know, and that's because I've married an Irish girl. She says, right, I'm off here. I'm off out drinking. You're taking me. You've got to be sober so you can bring me back home again. I'm going to have a party. So that's all right. Do you guys, do you guys have Uber or like Uber or Lyft over there? Any of those ride sharing things? Because I, I, I haven't been to the UK or Ireland or Wales. I think or they Scotland do in England. I'm not sure about over here. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> they don't really have it in Ireland. Not, not no, as much. It's, not it's as just much. not. There's just not the the volume and the taxi it's still laws. Tax, it's still a taxi, right? Oh, there's still, still taxis. taxis. Yeah, yeah, That's it. yeah. It's Ireland is more a case of the insur- It's insurance because right. you know the, the cost of insurance in Ireland. It's a suing culture as well. I don't like saying it, but it is. And I never mind suing. It's nearly staged, yeah, yeah. and then sue you. So it, it's it's so therefore to get the license to suddenly have your private car to be a no. You could barely use your own car and have a license and get the insurance first. <laughs> I, I've, been have a, I've been else in a black taxi. They used to go down the Falls <clears throat> Road and uh, yeah. they used to pile in about six or seven different people and it used to cost 30p to get down the road. And they, they parked a taxi once and uh, this car accidentally went into the back of it. And the next thing everybody went we got straight to the hospital. Yeah, I'm going to put a claim in. <laughs> so there was the claim. Yeah. You know, it's all my neck. <laughs> it's all it's, in my neck. No, it's, it's terrible, <laughs> but it's so true. You know, if I thought about it when I was younger and literally seatbelts didn't exist, but as you said, George just said it, going home from nightclubs, it was how many bodies were in the boot. Uh-huh. You go, it was literally, you were had you had bodies in the boot. You're going, it's, you just fit them and wrap them and folded them up and put them in and eight people or 10 people got home in, in, in like a Ford Fiesta, which is something for four people, yeah. especially if they were Japanese or Chinese. Well, I know, I know I went to pick my wife up once and there's about 10 other people in the car and none of them were with her party because they wanted to get home. <laughs> So they, this is like two o'clock in the morning. Two o'clock in the morning, you go in Nuri. Nuri's only got about twenty-three thousand people. Okay, and the whole, uh, the whole two thing o'clock, is, George. Everybody comes out. The and they can't find Uber. a taxi. Yeah. <laughs> so. John, John, the, actually, Uber was there thirty years ago. It was just run by a bunch of you know people bringing alcoholics <laughs> from pub to pub and maybe home <laughs> and maybe charging for the petrol. But it wasn't, it wasn't actually, you know, we didn't realize that you could have Uberized from that moment <laughs> onwards and actually had a billion pound firm across the planet. Exactly. It was already done. Someone just monetized it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I, I, so I, have, I have a question. So, um, what, so what is it, what is it over like there right now with the pandemic? Are you guys locked in? You know, what's, what's sort of going on right now? Yeah, well, we're, we're oppressively locked in, in in the UK, and apparently next week we will be oppressively unlocked, and we will suddenly all float up into the air and cause all kinds of more pandemics elsewhere, because not because of any viruses, but just because we're all mad around here. North, Southern Ireland is slightly different. I live on the border between Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland, and there's a different regime just south. We now, we're just... trying to open up, and the government is there's this thing called NEFID, which is basically the medical advice. Right. And the government has made the wrong decision so many times. Now it's blaming them, going, We're gonna every time everything they tell us we're gonna do, and we're not gonna open up. So there's an over cautiousness for a while. Yeah. There was an under cautiousness which made it explode again. Now they're doubly over cautious because they made a mistake twice and they want to get back into government. And now the weird thing is this that we are, we have half the population uh, jabbed. But at the same time, all the math says, mathematically, we're about to go from 500 cases to a couple of thousand cases a day, but the hospitalizations are going the opposite way. But the thing is, we've got these other variants out there. So we're on the precipice of opening when the numbers are going up. Yes. And But it's just because we're jabbed. We're half fine, but where it's going to go rampant is when the other half, there aren't. Yeah. So I have my daughter working in a hotel that she's she isn't jabbed and the people in there are. So she can actually go work in it, but can't come in the other door and actually sit in it and order. So because she hasn't got her jab, but right. she can work in it. So there's a total madness of going on of actually the hotels, you can have people in it. Yeah. But the restaurant next door can't open and have people in it because it's not a hotel. Well, we, we went to Dublin so last week ridiculous. and uh, we, we'd actually crazy, managed to so. get into a hotel, which was fine. And we, we went we went to walk around Dublin and you, you, there was nowhere to sit. So you had to walk for miles and miles and miles. There were a couple of places that were open outside, but you, you couldn't go inside to have your pint of Guinness. And it, it was completely mad. And it was Temple Bar. So the, so the whole Temple Bar, which is this favorite, favorite street that's in there, was full of people getting drunk outside. No social distancing, <laughs> all having a great ball. <laughs> you kind of go, and riots. Right, there's a hot spot. Riots. And, and riots. Yeah, they, they, that, that happened in the evening. We managed to escape that part. <laughs> so what, yes, what, I, what's happening is when people were inside before in these particular areas, there was a certain you know, decorum or bounces on the bar and tourism and an attraction. But now what's happened is there's no barriers. So every fucking cowboy, God knows what, is training <laughs> it in with their, ca- with their bag of cans and tins and actually getting 
trolleyed with the tourists and they get all in one spot. Yeah. And literally, Dublin has now got running battle riots because they're all off their heads drunk and they're taking, they're just attacking each other it's because mad. there's no barrier or distance from this, this societal difference in tourism. I'm a tourist, you're a guest. You shouldn't be here because you shouldn't, you know, for because yeah. you're you're crime, you're trouble, you're the one right. that pickpockets us, you're the you know, but again, it's all these different parts of society are now mixing out in the outside bars, and there's yeah. no actual barrier. There's there. So What's there's it like a weird, in Dallas? I don't want to go there. Yeah, <laughs> so I mean it, it's it's kind of gone the opposite way here, right? Because you know, we we have a, a governor, you know, who <laughs> I don't want to go there, man. I mean, it's just like, it's clear. It, he makes decisions based on what he wants to do or what he thinks yeah. is good for his political career, as opposed to, you know, what's good for, you know, the people in his state. And like, he opened it up early, early, early on, no masks, no nothing. And that was even before, you know, really a large part of the population had been, had been stuck, had been jabbed, as you guys say, right? But yeah. I mean, now the majority of people that want a vaccine have already gotten both their shots or their single shot or whatever it is. And so what's happening is, you know, and it's generally the uneducated and more of the right wing folks who are not getting the, yeah. the vaccine. Yeah. So, you know, I'm curious to see the statistics of, you know, what happens with the Democratic and the Republican oh, no, population. No, I, I think I'll right? be locked up if you, yeah. I could give you some of the demographics here. It, and literally, so I'm sure it's throwing them off, you know, more. They won't put the map the up because they were told, again, it's like discrimination. Yeah. You're going, yeah. if you put the map of where it's all happening, you're able to go, right here is 80% of the cases. Where, what's the demographic there? It's they're having house parties. Yeah. They don't go to school yeah. or college. They all bus into here and break into cars. You know, or not. Now, that's very, very unfair because there is a poverty thing. There is a demographic, a psychographic. There's a mix. But unfortunately, the maths is playing out. It's yeah. exactly educated yeah. versus uneducated, poor versus a little bit wealthier. No, it, it's, it's dictated true. by cities and zones and, where, and area codes where you live. So there is... There are bubbles of activity going on, and it does. The numbers do stack up. And well, I know, I know. We've we've had uh, my wife and I actually got COVID last year uh, at the very beginning of it. Nineteenth of March, we both got it. Now, we didn't get it bad. Tisha was back to work within about uh, two weeks, you know, uh, within the the time scale. But unfortunately, I I got the long COVID. And I ended up getting asthma. So, uh, yeah. and, and you couldn't get a test until about six, seven months later to find out that we had got the antibodies, which kind of proved that we had it. And, and our first few shows that we've got, I've got, I've got COVID and I'm trying to go through a show with COVID. And I keep soldiering on and we, we got through it, but you can tell there's a big difference between now. He was happy early. to let I'm me kind of talk going, oh. because he was <laughs> coughing up a lung. Up. And in the meantime, actually, well, actually, when I look at some of the shows back there, I go, Jesus, George, you look very sick there, <laughs> those images. I mean, and he was, he's half dead. He was barely <laughs> able to breathe. He was happy for yeah, me yeah. to talk. But you can't survive you know, here, it. <laughs> here, here, they, here they, can't, they can't hire people fast enough. The, the economy is booming. I mean, the, the economy never really suffered. You know, some elements did, you know, movie theaters and other things like that. But they cannot hire people fast, fast enough. enough. Like they're paying people $1,500 bonus to start at McDonald's. That's oh, how right. bad it is. But nobody's like, Really, well, I, like, we have that here. The problem right. now is there's a certain the gate is the, the whatever the stimulus check is or equivalent, and <laughs> here they got better pay not working at a certain level of society. Now they can't yeah. get them back in. Now that, they have to figure out how to well. remove it. Yeah, yeah. And and so therefore the service industry is, which is you know you know it's maybe a minimum wage to industrial wage journey is having great difficulty attracting people back in. Now, it will, it will attract maybe certain age profile because it's go students that want to go to college and it'll, yeah. they'll get, but they will fill the numbers back up. Another bunch, and that's what we, exactly what we found was you had our age group that went, now we, we didn't realize we were working 60 hour weeks before. Yeah, We've, right. We were sucked into the whole madness of work and we identified ourselves with the work we were doing. And now, what, what actually the great we call it the great reset, reset. that happened was the stop. You suddenly woke up and you went, "What the hell? Thirty years? Where's it gone?" Right. And I suddenly realized, and George realized, I have a young family. The only thing that's invaluable is time. We we have to give more value to this time. This work life balance. There was no balance. There was no life. The life was work. 
and well, we weren't getting the opportunity to talk to people because we were su- the work was sucking our lives out. I mean, my wife's just retired. She's she's quite young, but she's retired because she's done the thirty eight years. And I know that the last couple of years she was in a in a, a higher middle management type role, and they were saying, "Oh, you have to do the court." You, she worked in the hospital, so every other Saturday it seemed she was she was having to be on call to fix problems in two regional hospitals you know and she was saying oh that would go towards your pension you know and so she was being stacked up these things and as soon as she then got a pension worked out and she just re- retired they said no nah, none of that went towards your pension <laughs> we just we just you know fooled you there ha <laughs> and she was kind of go what on earth was it doing and you know it's taken that time to to realize that you know we, we shouldn't have been working our socks off and i'm now actually getting to the point where i do feel wrecked I kind of go, and I've said this to Garvin, actually, I'm actually wrecked. I'm going to take a couple of minutes away uh, just to re, re, revitalize myself in some form or fashion, you know, just to chill out for a few minutes. And having those breaks does actually give you a chance to keep on working a little bit longer. But I'm working because I want to, not because somebody else has asked me to work, for, you know, and I think that's the, the important thing, you know. How, how come it took us so long to figure this out? Right. It's yeah. like we're grinding away for years, right? For years and years and years. And for what? Like yeah. we've missed a lot, a lot of things have just whoosh gone right, gone right by us, you know, and now we're just slowly figuring out, uh, maybe we should put our foot on the brake here yeah. a little bit folks and That's enjoy true. what's around us. And, um, you we've know, all I, been indoctrinated I, into silos. That's the language yes. where, where we do. We, it's a job, a career for life. That was all, it's no longer there. Now it's portfolio yeah. job, but even then, work, yeah. work, work, five jobs, six jobs. You go, no, all this work, the money is a, is a reward for the work. Now, if we can get the passion, and you know, that's what yeah. everyone wants. We don't, yeah. we, most people don't even have a passion because you didn't even have time to even find one because they had the bill, they had the strife, they had the bread and butter, they had to get this, do that. They couldn't stop long enough to think. Therefore, yeah. they couldn't actually develop a passion that could pay. Therefore, then they're 10 years in and the bill got bigger. Then it, 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 it was more impossible to extract yourself. Now, we, admittedly, you know, we're mid-50s and thereabouts. And we're going, it took us, actually, it took, as I said, it took, <laughs> just, it took the pandemic. To no, stop. It, it certainly was helpful. I mean, it's like, it helped I've, me I've, been, and it helped. I've been lucky. I mean, I do what I love. I've always done what I yeah. love. So I've been, I've been really lucky that way. I've never taken a job, you know, since I was in high school or something that, you know, was just to make money. You know, and so I get, you know, I'm one of the lucky guys on the planet, but I do like my problem is I have a hard time saying no. Right. So it's like, I'm like, you're just oh, a girl that can't okay. say no. That's yeah, what it exactly. is. Or- <laughs> I'm, I'm right out of Oklahoma. All right. Well, I, so I, it's like, you know, yeah, I've actually, again, within the last two years, I, I've been doing lots of video work and production work and various other bits and pieces locally. But one of the things that uh, I, I found, and I got talking to a builder that was having exactly the same problem. <laughs> Because we we tend to think that we shouldn't say no, and uh, we end up doing about three or four times the amount of work that we should do for, based on what they want to pay us. And now what's happened is I got a phone call yesterday from somebody who wanted me to do a video for them, and I had said, no, no, I'll, I might find someone to help you, but I'm not doing it anymore. Because I know that, that what they're asking for is going to be about five or six times the amount. I'm not going to enjoy it, and it's going to take me away from what I really want. So we're now saying to people, if you want to, if you want to book us to do something, you've got to pay a certain amount of money because that's the compensation that Garvin needs for the lack of me not being there and holding up the project that we're working on. And that works really, really well because people are going, oh, George is really, really busy. So he is busy, but he's doing what he loves doing, not what somebody else loves doing. And I think other people are getting the benefits from that because we can enjoy talking to you on the other side. You know, we've talked to people in Spain, in Argentina, and now in, in, in Dallas there and and all over the place and and it's really good because we never would have had that opportunity to do that before because we would have been just grinding our way you know trying to get something done trying to meet a deadline and i did learn a long long time especially from editing perspective that you suddenly had this deadline so you put all your energies into getting that deadline met and five minutes before the deadline the producer comes back to you and says oh we can now go on for another five hours but it's three o'clock in the morning <laughs> How am I meant to get the energy to keep on going to eight o'clock tomorrow morning. Uh, and you did find it, but you get burnout. And I think that's, that's one of the things you suddenly realize you can't keep doing that because you won't be around. And we need to have more conversations with people like this, because this gives you something worthwhile 
to to feel that actually that's what life's about i've enjoyed today because i've had a really great conversation with somebody and i'm going to enjoy when i edit this and i know that there's going to be an audience that will enjoy watching this because we're actually chilling out and having fun and that's what a lot of people want to do and and they need to be given permission to go and do the same thing because that's what's really important you know i i'm being more and more creative now because I, I spend at least you know the first hour of the morning writing i actually deliberately write every morning i get up I actually, it's a Monday to Friday thing because I give myself a break over the weekend, but I actually write and I'm enjoying what I'm having a chance to write and I don't need to be given permission. And I think most of us have grown up in a world where we had to be given, someone told us when we could go and do something else. And I think we've now rebelled against that and saying, no, no, we can make that decision. I can do that. And if someone's going to tell me I can't do that, you know what, I'm going to prove you wrong in a few, a few months or a few years time because I'll have gone ahead and done what you said I couldn't do. Well, I love that you're that you're setting up time like I'm I, like, you know, I have to write for a living, but I'm I'm never good at just like, hey, from nine to ten, I'm writing. It never works that way for me. Right. It's like, it's, you know, there'll be weeks I'm like, shit, I got I got nothing. Right. Like there's nothing going on in the back of the community. I was going to get it. I got nothing. And then all of a sudden, bam, it's like a rocket ship. And then yeah. you know, I'll be like in two weeks, you know, I'll, I'll have, you know, put together a draft or just there's just some, you know, it comes in spurts and dribbles for me, but you know, you've got to let yourself also know how you work, right? Like a yeah. lot of people, you know, they, they're good doing, you know, an hour a day or they're very disciplined. Like that's just not me. Right. It's like, no, uh, but the it, difference it, is Jonathan, he's not writing for work. You just don't <laughs> yeah, work up. is writing. Now your our equivalent of writing is probably <laughs> cappuccino, double chocolate chip muffin, shooting the breeze, talking some shite at the bottom of the road with someone else. It's 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 horses for courses, as they say. So therefore, you don't you'd associate writing with writing and work. Therefore, it's what yeah. is it surfing? What is the hour of, of creative distraction that isn't the paying job? Yeah, is the right. question. That's it. Yeah. That's true. It's very true. Well, I know you that, have the um, passion project, which is a total different something yeah. on the side, which isn't the one asked for by the client, but rather this is my plating, this is my go-to space, this is my opus day, this is my game. That's that's yeah. pretty much the one, you know. But you I know, think so I think like, what what I started to get into was this way that um, we, I did uh, Julian Cameron's The Artist Way, and I'm actually in week sixty two at the moment. I, I used to journal when I was a youngster, and I have I do lots of writing at various different times. I have to write a couple of essays at the moment, and I've got to get them those written there. There, there's a deadline. I've got to get two essays written in the next few days. But what I found is that I I, I have disciplined myself to specifically write at a certain time, at a certain day, to get a certain volume done. And then the rest of the day, I'm free to do other things. And what I'm finding is in the editing process, because, because I mean, I enjoy the filmmaking process. I enjoy what we're doing here. But I know that I'm going to have a bit more fun playing around with the editing of, of multiple cameras and stuff. And and then I'll produce a little bit of graphics and stuff. And and I have, you know, I, I, I have a pattern of work that I go through and I know that I can achieve what I need to do and I don't have to overly think about it, but there are then these conversations that we're having where you suddenly get that kind of creative spurt coming out and you kind of go, Oh, look at all those ideas. And we're now capturing those conversations and we're starting to turn those into, to written material as well and work out how, how, what, what the value could be within them that we could share with other people that might help them go through similar sort of ways of working. Because I, I, know, I, I have a son who's doing a master's degree and he's sort of panicking because he's thinking he's got some kind of psychological problems. And I said, son, I'll help you work through this. There's a way, there's a methodology. And when we applied that methodology, he was getting nearly first class, you know, honors degree kind of qualifications out of it. And I said, look, you know, it's, a, it's just a process. Don't overthink it. Just do it. Get it done. Don't let that thing stop you. And I think that that works really, really well. No, it's not to stop you from doing what you do. You've got your method and that method works. And I think that's the key thing everybody has to find. What's the method that works for you so you can achieve what you need to achieve? And also what I used to tell a lot of my students in the past was you have to plan for the times when you want to relax and have entertainment, that, that you have to fit those in and give yourself permission to do that because that's when you switch off. And then all of a sudden these ideas come into your head because you're not trying to find those ideas to solve problems. Right. And you need that space to do that is, and that's valuable time and it could be charged as well. You know, going for a walk, you could charge that because that's when you get all these wonderful ideas because you don't know what's going to flood in. <laughs> I, mean, I always you... say to George, like my, well, my wife was always saying it to me, 
you go, what are you doing? I'm saying, I'm doing nothing. And she says, well, <laughs> stop doing nothing, do this. And I go, no, no, I'm doing nothing. The nothing I'm doing is nothing. And the nothing because what it does, yeah. it's the best thing I do. You know, and, and it opens up, as you said, as soon as I've stopped, it's, I can't stop the creativity coming in. Actually, I nearly drown. I nearly need to do something to stop that. But well, it's and, actually and about actually maybe... being, isn't it? We've, we've started to go yeah. through this conversation that it's not about doing, it's about being. And the great thing is you're a writer. So you're, you are a writer. That's your being is a writer. Mm -hmm. And we, we do lots of crazy little things and we're that. You know, I class myself as a filmmaker. I don't have to do anything to be a filmmaker. I just keep doing, I, I am, that's what, you know, and I'll, there'll be things that I just suddenly get interested in. Like my son suddenly sent me a load of pictures that they had photographs of, of the family. And it was on WhatsApp and I went through, God, that's a very muddy image. So I, I said, look, this image should look like this and it should be cropped like that. And I sent the images back to him. He says, yeah, I thought there was something wrong with them, Dad. <laughs> and I hadn't thought yeah. about it. It's just that I automatically sort of edited all these photographs that sent me. Just I because mean, I, I mean, you, you, you have a similar disease to what I have. It's called creativity, right? Yeah, so yeah, if, that's it. <laughs> you know, and even if I'm not making a film or writing a film or you know, posting a film or developing a film or, you know, whatever. I, I love to build. So I'm building a shed oh. or like I built, a, I built, a, we redid our entire backyard and we built a swimming pool and I designed the swimming pool and I, I did it the way I wanted to do it. Right. Because there's just something about the, the I'm in, I'm in a, the, I'm yeah. in a log cabin. <laughs> <laughs> That's my log cabin. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. That creativity really does. I'm rising to three it? different children to go, will you get that feckin' dog in? There's a German <laughs> Shepherd barking out there. You're barking around. Going, George is going to be giving out to me. So here all this big woof woof no, going no, on. I can't hear those sounds. Yeah, but that. You know, but do you know what? I, mean, I know I, it's been picked up here. Yeah. I've just put together a fence. <laughs> I've I, I got yeah. myself a pneumatic uh, nail nail gun, gun and yeah. a whole lot of other things. And we put a fence up. And uh, we actually had a neighbour put a fence up, and they wanted to charge me double the amount of money that I knew it was. And I went, "Hang on a second, you know, get that right, but don't charge me all this money." <laughs> And we went and put up our fence. Now I'm starting to plan where the where the next shed could go because I want to have a crack. Yeah, right. How, how are you enjoying that process? How are you enjoying that? Well, I love it. I used to, you know, I had my own home renovation television series years ago. So oh, wow. I always I always <laughs> bought houses and flipped houses, and then I made a TV show out of it. Right. So you're you not know, Tim to Toolman Taylor, was it? No. <laughs> no, it was not Tim, and it wasn't Bob Vila either, right? So, uh, although I grew up watching those shows, I love those shows. But it was it was back in a time when I was commuting between Los Angeles and, and Vancouver, Canada, and I was up in Vancouver, and they had just created this thing called HD High Definition. I mean, it was coming, yes. but nobody could afford to shoot on it, right? Because it was like a half a million dollar camera, and you had to have prime lenses, and and so we did this deal with Sony and they gave us all the gear. So we were the first TV show in Canada to actually shoot in high definition. You know, now you can shoot 4K on your phone, oh, no. <laughs> you know, but it was back back in the day. So, you know, we had probably the best looking home renovation show on the planet. And then that's actually how I ended up in, you know, in Ireland and, and places like that is once we had that successful show and we were shooting in HD, you know, places like the Golf Channel and other places like, hey, why don't you make a Golf Channel in high definition? We, we'd love that. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> you know, sometimes it's just like, you know, your business brain and your creative brain. And I'm like, I love doing houses. And so it yeah. all, you know, some of that stuff all, all comes together. And and uh, it also gets you out of your, you know, your regular track too, right? Yeah. I'm not making a film. I'm building a shed or I'm That's making it. a pool or whatever That's it is. It. And that, you know, I think, I think you keep the wheels turning on other things then that does to your point kind of reinvigorates re-energizes you when you come back to yeah. sort of your yeah. vocation right well during the actually, during I, the pandemic i i well actually when i was teaching that there was a period where i had to stop because of burnout and i, I learned to play the violin uh, and i really i you know people again told me i couldn't and i went you know what i'm gonna have a crack now, at was it. it the violin or the fiddle which did you yeah. learn to play no well, george I, didn't I, hear actually, actually the violin Jonathan, what people says was they <laughs> wish he wouldn't <laughs> you know it's not that he couldn't we, we cleared the cats out of the garden which was brilliant because we now have lots of birds no but i got better at it and i did actually we won't talk about it but i did I found a captive audience. That captive audience was the congregation, the local church, and I played in there they for about two and a half them. years. So I did. I did get. I've actually got the local priest asking me if I could go and teach him that's how to play using, the violin. That's using your power as a deacon for for bad stuff, oh, man. Like you're oh, forcing I, 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 I'm only in training the deacon. I wasn't a deacon then, so that was okay. <laughs> 
saying that's that's pretty sad man. the same sort of uh, thing is that uh with with i i have a vi i have guitars all over the place and i spent I, I i couldn't learn to play the guitar for nearly 40 years and all of a sudden because i feel a bit more chilled out i'm now getting a chance to do those sort of so things you went from six strings to four strings you thought that would be easier is that yeah, kind of the well, idea I, I, I kind of went backwards and forwards and i, and I, and I, mess I have around, no strings is... on my bow at all yeah. you know not... tone deaf music you know actually my kids are quite musical and I don't, it's certainly not coming from me and then that's why i'm questioning hold on a second i'm 606 they're about five foot four i'll have to talk to my wife and see what's going on because they're musical <laughs> They're, they could take care. They're mindful. They are, you know, they're just not me. There's nothing in the DNA that seems to be translating from a mini. Well, a lucky, mini. lucky your kids. I've only known you for about an hour, and I'm glad that your kids didn't get any of that DNA. That's probably a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you no, know, the whole point is it could be worse than me. That's the whole. I'm wondering <laughs> if they've got it, and now they're going to be a 10x me. That could be very dangerous as well. You know, but again, it could be good for YouTube. I don't know. You know, it, it's 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 that type of thing. But you no, know, it's good. To, that's no, that's back to what we were talking about in the sense of the wake up call in the last two years has been the work life balance, family, what's important, time, money. You know, it's just that was an evidence of a different output. Hopefully, it comes from passion, doing something you like and love, and that's the the new journey that we, myself and George, and people we're involved with are now going on. We're prioritizing time and passion over money, family over such and such. I'm sure T Tony Robbins and all that, is, that's what you're meant to be doing. And it's a rebalancing and a reweighting. And that's what we're starting to enjoy and starting to be aware, aware of more so than anything else. Right. So we're, we're excited about where that might bring us. And it's brought us to yourself. It's brought us to, we're doing things. If you went back two years in time, you couldn't come up with yeah. as, as a goal or, or as, as, a, as something that could be happening in the absence of that stop and start. So it's, it's actually, there's a lot of positive that came for, from it for us. We won't dwell on the negative that it's caused out there because that we know what it is, but there is a wake up call for an awful lot of people and hopefully more people will be mindful of time and family and wealth. The wealth is the health, is the family, not the wealth wealth. You know? Absolutely, and did you find well, I wouldn't mind the money this... too, that's yeah. good. Well, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> But did you find uh, did you find this period of time gave you those kind of opportunities as well, Jonathan? Or have you had a different experience of the last couple of years? Well, I, I call it hunk. You know, you either became a hunk, a chunk, or a drunk during the during the pandemic. No, I'm just kidding. You. No, it, it was. Or I mean, all three. <laughs> yes, or all three, all of the above. Yes, yeah, so I've right? got to lose a few things here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my COVID nineteen is right around my waist right now. Yeah. Um, no, it's it's. Uh, I definitely found. You know, I have a twenty three year old son, and we have a seven year old daughter. Don't even go there. I don't know. There's not a booze in the day to figure that gap out. So, <laughs> but we're all. You know, we've all been living in the same house. You know, for over a year, and you know, my daughter thinks it's you know summer camp. So it's been great, you know, she's her parents around the whole time because I usually had to travel a bunch, you know, go shooting all over the world yes. and whatever else you're doing. Or, if, you know, my wife calls it, she becomes a film widow, you know, when I'm making a film because I'm just not only, even if I'm here, I'm not. My brain is always, you know, off making the film or you're in, you know, 16 hour days. So it was really interesting, especially I think the first three or four months, we just didn't do anything. Right. It was like the first time in, you know, in my life that I hadn't just really, which is why I started building sheds. I'm like, I got to do something. But it was really nice just to kind of not do a lot and not fill your brain with with unnecessary things and just be kind of present. And I think I think that was a, a huge, interesting a reset. Um, and at the same time, when I was doing that, just people were throwing projects at me. It was one of the most prolific writing years of my life even though i said look guys i'm not going to go out and shoot this film they're like no 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 no, just 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 write it for us you can direct it in a couple of years so when sometimes when you just kind of pause and say no it's interesting what happens then you can really pick and choose and cherry pick what you want to do that then fits into that sort of new that new direction of, of how you're living your life i think that's been a really interesting part you know part of this for me anyway now, I'm reminded of a different thing, that a statistic, you enjoy statistics, that's about to come out of England and Ireland. And what it's tied around, again, the magic number 19 and all the rest of it. And what it is, is there's going to be a bunch of people were thrown together that weren't ever together for years. And now they suddenly realize, I never liked you, never loved you. 
we had to work. <laughs> now I have to see you. Now I have to talk to you. So we have, and now there's another bunch whereby we're always away. Now we're back home. So there's a baby boom about the kickoff, uh, and right. there's a divorce boom about the kickoff because right. one bunch never saw them. Now they're back in love because he got time, and the other bunch didn't realize they never liked them, didn't have to look at them, and now they have to get rid of them. <laughs> so. You're lucky to be in one side of that kind whereby your 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 wife wanted to see you. Whereas well, her bunch sure, are gone, I'm not sure about never that. liked to look at you. She didn't really have a choice at that point, right? So uh, <laughs> but no, we were actually saying that we're like, it's a good thing we kind of like each other. I think that 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 sort of worked out. But I think there will be a lot of industries. I'm sure the divorce lawyer industry will go up. I'm sure, you know, you know, couples counseling must be through the roof right now. Yeah. You know, all of those kind of, certainly exercise, you know, trying to get rid of your 50 yes. pounds that you yes. gained in the last year. Because <laughs> all of those things, you know, that the industries will will ebb and flow. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, how that, how it all evens out, as they say. Great. That's it. So well, again, if we play the statistics, George is, you know, we could have another kid in the way. I I'll probably no, have I a divorce so. papers being sent to me. You, you're probably in the middle going, no, you are happy out. You've got the seven and the 13 or the 30. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Actually, I this stomach snip, isn't man. me being pregnant, yeah. God. You're you lucky. Just leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> right. now strangely enough i'm gonna i'm gonna hone in on that one was that your choice or her choice that was my choice <laughs> oh there you go <laughs> well look, we are actually at a point where we probably should bring this show to an end because we've gone well over an hour believe it or not right. we, we, we try to keep it sort of around about an hour-ish sort of the time mainly because the cameras will probably get filled up fairly rapidly and things like that that's okay what we normally try and do is kind of give a roundup of what we've been talking about. We've, we've gone yeah. from some, where have we gone from? We've, we've gone from various different things like Star Trek, which was really quite good. We've, we've even gone to sheds and, and making, you know, making things, which I think is really, Building really fantastic. Building stuff with your Building hands. Building stuff with your hands. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's really good. And we've, we've also got into the kind of creativity and the fact that we don't need to be given permission to go and do what we would really like to do. And we've reached that sort of period of time now where we can do what we want to do. Well, maybe actually, Jonathan, you've had a chance to do it most of your life. And I think I have as well. So it's just Garvin that hasn't because he, he got stuck as an accountant for a short period of time. But now he's free and he's able to go off and do what he needs to go and do. We'll yeah, but no one there. wants me. No one cares. Nobody wants. Oh, we, we do. We do. We love you. We love you. We I'm love you. I'm frightening people. <laughs> they, you know, no, no. Lock them back up again is what they're saying. So. Well, look, what we normally do is we, at the end of these little shows, we just like to, to ask people if, the, if there's any little messages they'd like to give just at the very end. So we'll go off with Jonathan there. We just, is there anything you'd like, just like to finish the show with by saying, <laughs> uh, should we actually talk to you again? Or have you, <laughs> we had a bad experience <laughs> with you. <laughs> Never again. Never again. Never again. No, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's interesting, you know, we're, we're on this platform Zoom, right? Yeah. You know, and you know, you, this was kind of a, a new thing that this is kind of our forced point of communication in a lot of ways for, for part, especially the beginning of the pandemic. But I think one of the things, you know, we as human beings tend to find the good out of the bad. And so I think a lot of people started reconnecting with people, you know, old college chums or family they haven't seen, you know, in a group, which this, this great piece of technology gave everyone a chance to sort of be in a room you know, in the, room, in the room together. Uh, it, and it's kind of these, as you start to think about these things and moving forward, um, we have this tool, but it'll be, it will be interesting. I'm looking forward to get back, getting back in the room Real. with yeah. people having a pint. And as, as wonderful as the technology piece is, there's really nothing that's better than actually connecting with people in the same room, you know, sharing ideas, you know, over a pint. Um, you know, and, and people from different and diverse backgrounds. So I hope that as we come out of, you know, this pandemic, that more people will take the time to your point of, hey, I'm not going to work today. I haven't seen my buddy in, you know, a year. Let's just go spend the day together, right? Yeah, like, go, go spend some time with, with the people that you really want to reconnect with. And so that's what I say. I would, I'd hope people watching the podcast really just take the opportunity to do that. Well, look, thanks That's very it. much. Get there, that Jonathan. pint and whiskey chaser yeah. and be in the room with the bud. Yeah. In the room. <laughs> well, we'll give Garvin his last couple of words before we wrap uh, up completely. No, I'm still frightened from that little symbol a minute ago. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm oh, somewhere else a good at the thing. moment. That's yeah. probably a good thing. Well, look, Jonathan, Because if that's going to be told, no, you made a choice. 
I don't think I'm gonna have one. No, I think no. that's gonna be that's gonna be imposed. That's, so that's the action. only room that's that's I don't job. want to be in down. Is, that's the, it. is the man with the white coat or the person with the white coat <laughs> with anything that's doing that. I'm not in that room, but I'm in the room with the pint and the whiskey chaser. You know, so I, I'm leaving it at that. I, I'm okay right. with that. Well, look, thanks very much, Jonathan, for joining us on our little show and, and to spend the time with us. It's been great sort of having a chance to chat with you. And hopefully we'll have an opportunity again sometime in the future to keep this, to continue this on somewhere along the line, which I think would be great. And thanks, well, Garvin, for your introduction. Slantra and cheers to you. Brilliant. And, uh, thanks, we will then. bring it out of the room and into the real room in that's time. Right. That's the, that's the next one. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks very much. And uh, bye for now. <laughs> Bye for now. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications.